Thank you so much for joining the Chucky Roundhouse today with a couple of additional tips for making your amazing at-home hope flag. Make sure to soak all your 100% cotton fabric in your soda ash solution. That's one cup of soda ash for one gallon of water for at least 20 minutes. Your roundhouse kit includes pre-labeled squeeze bottles. If you're starting from scratch, make sure to label all your bottles. Once you've labeled your bottles, you're gonna to wanna to measure out your dye, starting with your lightest color first, yellow perhaps, and ending with your darker colors, red, black, purple. We are using powder dye purchased from the Dharma Trading Company. They recommend two tablespoons of dye per eight ounces of liquid. If you want a little bit of a deeper color, add a little bit more dye. If you want faded or lighter colors, add less. If you wanna be able to repeat the outcome, make sure you take notes. Otherwise, once you add the powder dye, add half of the water, shake vigorously, then add the rest of the water, shake vigorously, and you're ready to start coloring your product. If you're touching dye, wear gloves. I forget and regret. It took me a while, but I have clean hands and we're ready to start our first project. We're gonna do an accordion, which you can do straight, sideways, diagonal. You wanna focus on getting really tight folds and for me, tight elastic around the project when it's completely folded, give you the best results. If I add dye, I'm gonna use the rubber band as the break for my color. I'm gonna make sure that I completely saturate the fabric and get it nice and juicy, and then I'm gonna wrap it up in saran wrap. To help you see what the folds create, we're gonna follow up each twist with what the color final product looked like. Assume, based on video magic, that we let that sit for 24 hours and we've already washed and dried it. I love a spiral. It's another easy, no-fail pattern. I start on a corner, but anywhere on the project will work. If I'm doing clothing like a t-shirt, I usually am a little bit more careful and I like to start on the shoulder. Each of the elastics we're placing on this project will create a slice of pie that we can color. There are two basic approaches. You can color each pie slice front and back the same, or you can color the front, each pie slice, and then the back a solid color like black. As we untie the spiral, you can see it's a beautiful, easy pattern. If you want more color saturation, make sure to really get your project juicy before you wrap it. Hearts are deceivingly easy. First, you're gonna fold the project in half and trace half a heart along the fold. Use your finger, a pencil, a chopstick, any tool will do. Starting at the bottom, you're gonna pinch along that line all the way to the crescent or the V which is actually the tricky part. So if this is your first time, practice. Draw it and pinch on that line until you feel comfortable. The heart needs to pop, so choose a color combo when you're dyeing, like pink, blue, purple, red, any contrasting color will work. We're gonna use blue and pink so we can see what happens. The tight elastics create really nice clean lines between each of the colors. It's really only important between the heart and the next color. After that, it's up to your own preference. You can mix your dyes to create new colors. You can create this effect either by using loose elastics so the dye naturally bleeds as it's soaking through the fabric, or you can just put one color on top of another. You can put yellow and then a little bit of blue and you'll have some patches of green in there. In this case, we blended blue and pink to make purple. Our last pattern is easily my favorite and is all about folding. This technique is loosely based on the Japanese shibori method and there is no wrong way to fold so start folding. Not only is there no wrong way to fold, there's also no wrong way to color. So feel free to use any color combinations of dye. Just remember the thicker the folds, the more dye the project will require. If color saturation is key for you, then less folds. You'll lose a little bit of detail in your pattern, but when you unfold it, it'll be bright and bold. And if that's important to you, then that's important to you. I like white space, so we're gonna do a little bit of a under saturation on this project. If you're just starting, 
I suggest that you start with large shapes. The details can get tricky and the folds can get more particular the smaller you go. You'll notice as we unfold this that the tight elastics created really clean white lines between the colors. As this video comes to an end, I just wanna remind you all, as you wrap up your tie-dyes in plastic, make sure they sit for at least 12 to 24 hours before you rinse them and dry them, which I like to do twice before I give them as a gift or use them myself. And make sure that you do clean up immediately after tie-dyeing because the dye will, well, dye whatever it gets in contact with. I hope you have a great time crafting. Thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great craft afternoon.